today. It's a 6.4 GHz. China's gaming GPU is just sad. More on NVIDIA's next-gen RTX 5000 GPUs and say goodbye to Ryzen? Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. First up for today, I've discussed Intel's upcoming Special Edition 14900K S CPU for a little while now. And so far, it's mostly been to say that you don't want to buy this thing. I mean, it's going to be hot, have unbelievably high power draw, too expensive, and the list goes on. Well, a new leak just surfaced that makes it at least a bit more interesting. According to a new screenshot from one leaker and later reported by Tom's Hardware, MSI apparently has new overclocking profiles for the upcoming CPU. More Specifically, they offer an overclock of a very impressive 6.4 GHz. Now, keep in mind that the 6.4 is only on a single core, with 5.9 GHz being for the rest of the P cores. Alternatively, there's a 6.4 GHz overclock with 5.8 GHz for the rest of the cores. And obviously, that's at least a bit better over its rated 6.2 GHz boost clock. Though we are talking a single core, but still, not bad at all. With that said, it's still not going to be worth the wild premium over the regular 14900K, especially with it at the $750 we saw leak in my last video. Not to mention the nuclear power plant you'll likely need to keep it at this clock for long. Obviously, we'll have to wait and see with third-party reviews. But first, I have a bit of a guilty pleasure. I actually really like the show Big Bang Theory. I know, I know. Unfortunately, it's not on Netflix, at least if you're in the US but it is available in the UK. And that's where today's sponsor comes in, Private Internet Access. All I have to do to get every season of the show is to turn on Private Internet Access, make sure it's in the UK, refresh Netflix, and there it is. So there's a ton of movies and shows that you can get access to with Private Internet Access. Plus, because it's a VPN, it can also hide your IP address to keep your data private whenever and wherever you browse the internet. And what's great is that Private Internet Access lets you protect an unlimited number of devices on one subscription, meaning your entire entire household can be protected for one low price. And speaking of that low price, when you visit my link in the description, you'll get a whopping 83% off, bringing it down to just $2.03 a month. Once again, that's $2.03 a month when you visit my link in the description below. Next up for today, China's own gaming GPU, the MTT S80, has been seeing a ton of reports over the past few months that the driver updates have given it some huge performance gains. But obviously, most of those are coming from Chinese media sites, so we'll have to take that with a grain of salt. With that said, Computer Base recently ran some tests of the MTT S80 along with the newly released MTT S30, and it's pretty bad. As you can see, both GPUs get absolutely demolished by AMD's own Ryzen 8700G, and that's an APU, meaning AMD's integrated GPU crushes the S80, with even the 5700G and 5600G beating it in Counter-Strike 2. With that said, Dota 2 actually got very close to the 8700G, so it's clear which games the company are really trying to optimize for. But still, it lost to an APU. Remember that the MTT S80 was build as the first PCI Express 5.0 GPU, it has 16 gigabytes of GDDR6 VRAM, I mean, it looks like a decent card on paper. But at this point, I'm not sure if it's the hardware itself or just a massive need for driver optimizations. Either way, it's clear that the company has a long way to go. Next up, we have more news from the RTX 5000 front. Recently, I discussed the fact that one leaker is sticking to his guns and claiming that NVIDIA's GB202 is set to come with an unreal 512-bit memory bus. That, of course, should make up the RTX 5090, which means we can expect even more memory on NVIDIA's next flagship GPU. Well, today we get more info on lowering RTX 50 cards. And if you like learning about all the next-gen PC hardware, make sure you subscribe to GamerMeld. Starting things off, once again from copite 7 kimmy he claims that the GB203 comes with a 256-bit bus and the GB205 gets a 192-bit bus. Just to make sure there wasn't a mistake, video cards even asked if he's saying there won't be a 384-bit bus. And copite 7 kimmy confirms that it is the case, at least for now. Basically, NVIDIA is planning to up the memory bus of their highest-end GPU, yet at the same time keep their lower-end parts the same. 
so there's potentially going to be an even bigger difference between the 5080 and 5090 than there is with the 4080 and 4090. And we know there's already a huge performance gap between those. Unless Nvidia is planning to make the 5080 from a cut down version of the GB202 instead of the GB203, which would be a change from what they've done with the 4080. Still, it certainly could happen, but if not, NVIDIA's 5090 could be an absolute monster with lower end cards not seeing as much of a difference. So at the end of the day, if you're hoping to pick up one of NVIDIA's upcoming RTX 5090s, you'd better start saving today. And lastly for today, I have some terrible news. If you haven't seen yet, cryptocurrency is doing extremely well. In fact, it's currently well above its highs from 2021, with a single Bitcoin being worth well over 70,000 US dollars. Now, while Bitcoin mining itself doesn't really affect the consumer PC market thanks to ASICs making generalized computing ineffective, the issue is that when Bitcoin goes up in price, so do altcoins. And there's one in particular that seems to be having an effect on CPUs. More specifically, the cryptocurrency called Cubic, and it's a currency that does really well with CPUs. And according to a new report from Tech Power Up, it seems to do really well with CPUs that use the AVX512 instruction set. That's good news for anyone looking at a new Intel CPU given the company doesn't support AVX512 in their consumer CPUs anymore, but AMD's new Ryzen 7000 does. And so far, with 24 hours of mining cubic using a 7950X, miners are able to get around $3 a day. Which may not sound like much, but that's a CPU that pays for itself in around 6 to 7 months. And that's if price doesn't go up that much. Of course, you'd think miners would have learned their lesson on volatility by now, but that's that doesn't look to be the case, as the 7950X seemed to have sold out overnight. I will say you can still get it at a few places, but it could very quickly become an issue. Given the fact that miners have bought hardware for way less return in the past, I'd bet that they won't stop at the 7950X. So if you've been thinking about getting one of AMD's Ryzen 7000 CPUs, I'd suggest doing it sooner rather than later, because before long, Ryzen 7000 could be gone. So while that does it for today, are you pumped for Nvidia's next gen GPUs or are you just annoyed about cryptocurrency's resurgence? Let me know down in the comments below. And don't forget to check out private internet access down in the description below. And as always, have a great day.